Do so, you guys want to revisit more on this jury rights issue and uh, the, the I, trial by jury notification? Yeah, I wanted to real quick. Um, we got distracted a little bit with uh, murder, basically. And what the trial by jury, the jury notification was, the intent of that is to s prevent government abuse. I mean, the government was the one sanctioning and sanctioning slavery at the time. Yes, there were people that had slaves and they wanted them, but the government was the one sanctioning them. The government was the one saying that black people were not humans, and the juries were the ones protecting their rights, saying, no, these people are humans, these people are humans, these people are humans. It wasn't necessarily, I mean, we got distracted with uh, murder and stuff. Yeah, if uh, a man killed another man and the jury let him go because he was the same color as them, well, then the time frame that we're talking about, that was government sanctioned also. It was the government law that the juries were going along with. You didn't have to have a trial by jury. The court itself would let you go. And it was the actual, the juries that knew what was right as far as the juries that were protecting people's liberties. They were the ones that said, no, these are human beings. And that is the purpose of the jury. Is this government regulation or law or statute correct? Should it infringe on the rights of these people? And they have the right to say, no, it does not. That was the intent of it in the Magna Carta. Well, so. Same thing with unions, right? Like unions, um, they would pass legislation against unions and the jury stood up against that. The right to uh, strike. That was, um, you did not have the right to strike. It was juries that threw that out, and now you can strike. Yeah, the, I mean, again, the the point is, if you if you believe in the if you believe in the government, right? To to the argument about you know juries uh, hanging hanging black people, that was the government law at the time. Right, and so if a jury, like Josh said, if a jury went along with that, they were just reinforcing what the law of the land was. The government's moral standard was low. Right, they did not believe that black people were human. That is what we would call a low moral standard today. And there were only a few people; it was a minority, who were abolitionists who believed that that blacks were people. Obviously, they knew they were people. Black people did, but there. I mean, right. But but there was a minority of you know the the white people actually believed that. But through the jury box, they were able to raise the moral standard before the rest of society caught on. And so there were people who were who were exonerated of guilt, right, who were found innocent uh, because a small minority had raised their moral standard and said this is wrong. And they didn't have to wait until uh, 60 years, 80 years, 100 years later um, to actually have their rights as human beings. So that was that was the whole point, is, is the government had the low moral standard and it was able to be raised by a minority through the jury box. Well, we have a good example of a government with no jury, um, no jury nullification at all. I guess the question would be, how many Jews wouldn't have died if the jury was allowed to judge the law? If they said, if a Jew was brought before the court and, and they had a jury that said, so what if he's a Jew? He's a human. I mean, that was a ba they were killed on the fact that they were Jews. If they had a jury that said, doesn't matter, they have a fundamental right to live. But anyway... All right, uh, 458 Talk is the number. We go back to the phones right here on KFAR. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning, uh, Frank Curry here. Hey, Frank. Um, you know, the last caller, uh, this is the same old cliche, yada, 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 that uh, those running for office is used uh, regarding what happened down south. It was very, very rare in history that uh, jurors would find a white man not guilty for killing a black, and this is the only thing that they come up with. I notice that I've uh, questioned uh, people running for office and elected officials. They always bring that one incident up, but you know, if they look at it, minority defendants uh, would have a better chance of, of receiving uh, justice in our court system when jurors are fully informed of their individual conscience, and that's far more important than the powerful, uh, you know, powerful than the majority opinion. Uh, Steve, you touched on something at the beginning of the show. You know, if jurors were only to look at the facts, well, we can bring in 12 computers. They can compile facts. Seems but to me computer, that's enough. Yeah, computers don't have a moral obligation to render a verdict. And uh, 
one of the things I'm bringing up is the the famous jury acquittal of John Peter Zinger. He was arrested uh, during the colonial days in New York. Colonial government gave us the freedom of press, freedom of press in this country. Then do you remember when they used to hang hang witches? Well, there was jury acquittals. Fifty-two in a row ended the Salem witch trials in Massachusetts in 1693. And then you go on to the William uh, Penn trial, the freedom of speech, religion, peaceable assembly, were established by the jury acquittal of William Penn, arrested for preaching Quakerism in his congregation in London in 1670. Another thing, it, this was already brought up, the jury defended the value of labor of rights of workers to refuse to enforce laws against striking, lobbied into place by big businesses until those laws were eliminated. Another thing, our freedom to consume alcohol beverages was restored by juries in the 1920s when jurors refused to convict people for liquor law violations until prohibition was repealed. Now, I always question these judges and elected officials. You know, why is it that four state constitutions, Maryland, Oregon, and Georgia, have explicit provisions recognizing the right of jury nullification, plus 24 other states imply it in their sections under freedom of speech. I wonder why that is. <clears throat> and uh, here's where the real case hits it. In 1895, the U.S. Supreme Court refused to remind a murder case. It's a famous case that the fully informed jury always reminds people. It's a sparse and bad Hansen versus United States appeal to them because the jury had not been fully informed of its rights, saying they should not have been told. Well, the court acknowledged the right of jury nullification, but here's what happened. But they left it to the judges to decide whether the jurors should be informed or not. So, you know, many judges become mum of that. Um, you know, this, the thing is, when people, before they're even summoned for jury duty, they should be fully informed before they even go into that box and swear to that oath, because that oath it isn't even binding when the judge gives them to them to uh, not vote their conscience. They can't judge the law as well as the facts. Well, that's not true. That judge is just a referee up there. That's all he is. Good call. Thank you very much, Frank. I really appreciate Thanks, it. Frank. Hey, has anybody seen today's edition of the News Miner? No. I have. Uh, there's a story. I just saw it. Uh, there, a group is seeking an injunction against Proposition 2, seeking to have it removed from the ballot. That's the. Uh, it's a group called Responsible Woodburners for Limited Government. They filed paperwork in Fairbanks Superior Court seeking an injunction claiming that Proposition 2 violates state law and will cause all residents of the borough to suffer irreparable harm. Hmm. It's very interesting. You know, you can't... Is there a single despotic government out there that has a trial by juries? I can't think of one. Why is that? Well, they can all vote, Aaron. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Generally well, speaking, proposition in, too, that's a good thing to bring up. Yeah. I mean, the, if that is passed, um, might be a time when there's quite a few people that have wood boilers, wood stoves, and all these things where they might actually sit there and say, boy, I wish... Uh, I wish our juries knew their rights, the rights that they have to judge the law as well as the fact when they get hauled in from a wood smoke cop because he doesn't like his wood smoke, so they haul him in there, and or he doesn't like the furnace that he has, his EPA-approved furnace, the new law will ban. So, ah, we're going to haul you into court. Well, he gets in front of a jury that's fully informed and knows their right to judge the law, they can kick it right back out. 458 Talk is the number we move on. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hey, good morning. It's Troy. Hey, Troy. Hey, I wanted to say I had an opportunity to sit on a grand jury a couple of years back, and uh, I'd make Frank Turney proud because uh, there was an indictment handed out. It's a long story, but with this gal, they found a crack pipe in the visor of her car, blah, blah, whatever. But uh, we, the grand jury, sat down, and we looked at the facts, we looked at the law, and we decided that, you know, there's not probable cause to send this uh send this case on and uh we essentially uh we let the girl off and uh you know i feel good about that i i uh i, I did what frank turney uh advocates um i didn't think the prosecution had a good case and and we said no we're not going to send this case to all oh, the prosecution didn't like that they were kind of mad but hey the fact are the facts and the law is the law and we we decided that 
looking at both of them. This gal did not have, um, uh, uh, she didn't deserve to be uh, indicted. Um, the law said she should have been. We decided she should not have been. And uh, without getting into a whole lot of uh, oh, the specifics, thank you. Yeah. On Frank Durney's philosophy, we the jury decided. Right. Yeah. If the question were just, did she have a, a crack pipe in her car? You know, she said then, she didn't know it was there, and I believed it. Right. Sure. I, she I, didn't I, testify. I've seen used cars where there's you you dig through them and you find stuff like that in them. You know, who knows? But but even if you know, even if she did, you know, that's not. Uh, there's no evidence of of wrongdoing there. It's like, oh, you know, they did she have a crack pipe or not? If she did, we're gonna we're gonna take it. Was it was possession. Right. There's no evidence of wrongdoing. There's no. Uh, they didn't she catch her. Sober? Right, exactly. Yep. We, we you know, we, we had an opportunity to question the trooper who arrested her, and, and pretty much the reason was why. You know, why did you even decide to search her car? Because uh, she had a record from something else. She was sober. She wasn't doing nothing wrong. She was on the side of the road with a gas can in her in her car waiting for somebody to come get her. And uh, boy, the prosecution wanted to get her good, and we said, nope, it's not going to happen. And, uh, Prosecution wasn't very happy, but the hell with them. You know, we 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 judge it the way we've seen it. Whether she knew it was there or not, I don't know. Could we prove it? Could the prosecution prove it? No. So we let her go. Right, out it goes. Good this is you. a country for the people and by the people, and the people decided on that case, and I'm proud to have been a part of that.